Okay, I have a secret that I want to share with you. And it's not easy for me to talk about, but I think in order to get past things, you have to be able to confront them. As a mystical collector, there are three words that scare the living out of me. Asia Goal Exclusive. Hear me out. Asia Goal Exclusives have been the hardest figures for me to acquire during my Mexico collecting crusade. Try to take over the world. No, just to complete the line. But there's only been two. But there was also the Shanghai Toy Show homemade Spider-Man. My point is, it's always been very hard to collect as an American buyer. Or, poor little American boy, can't collect your figures. Into the last Asia Gold pre-order that was put up was 10 times better because it was open to US buyers, but there was still a limit of two per person. So how am I supposed to complete the Creek 13? How am I supposed to complete the Creek 13? How am I supposed to complete the Creek 13? How am I supposed to complete the Creek 13? So that's how. Welcome back, everybody. Doesn't it seem like we just did this? I, I guess it depends on what order the videos come out. But whichever one or whatever multiverse we're in right now, hello, everyone. My name is Paige, and welcome to episode four of The Breakdown, where I showcase a figure so you can decide if it fits best within your collecting needs or wants. And in this episode of The Breakdown, we'll be taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Rumple Society, the Assault on Creek 13 Squadron Builder Set. Before I start, of course, I want to say thank you very much to Mezco Toys for generously sending this complete Creek 13 squad to show you guys. The only thing that they asked me was to make a video and show a shot at the end. Ah, no pressure. This was an advanced sample, so this version may or may not have additional items that'll come in the final version. I did a video previously on the Murder Hornet, so if you want to check that video out, I'll make sure I put a link in the description below. Uh, more than likely, you've probably already seen that video or you've seen the video previously about the Creek 13. Oh, in an attempt to do something differently, what I'm going to do with this one is just like a show and go. Uh, just some quick hits because the Krieg are pretty much a clone army and these two figures essentially, they're the same foundationally with some deco changes. I'll get to that in a little bit. Taking a look at the box art, we have the Rumble Society up in the left-hand corner. It's split down the middle, showing the Blood Force and the Pale Driver. Mezco exclusive sticker up in the right. And the Assault on Creek 13 Builder Set title at the bottom. I love the homage to Assault on pre 13. On the side of the box, we're going to get a picture of the Blood Force and Pale Driver. On the back of the box, we're just going to get one big giant picture of the helmet of the Creek 13. Top of the box, again, Assault on Creek 13 Squadron Builder Set title. The alternate side, same thing, but this time we get Pale Driver Blood Force leading us back to where we started. Now enough box four play, let's really get into this. Now you're going to have a two-figure set here, both uh, split down the middle. Top left, you're going to have your hands. Next, you'll get your clips, extra weapons, communications, taser, gun, and knife set. You also have White Krieg. Then you're going to get the Blood Force, same thing as the opposite side. Hands, clips, grenades, communication, and alternate weapons. Is that all I'm going to get? No, there's another tray. It has a bunch of accessories in here for you. You're at the top. You're going to get your proton cannon. You also get a cyber scythe. You also get an effect piece for your cyber scythe as well as effect pieces for your taser and your pistol. Mirror image on the other side. That's the stuff that you're just going to be getting for the blood force. You also get two ponchos. One's black, one white. I like these because if you want, you can always switch it up and it gives a little bit of contrast to your characters. Paige, I want more for my $150. Well, I tell you what, one more tray it is. In this one, you're going to get your bases, your stands, and your plastic baggies. The accessories that you got, those will all be able to hold in that little plastic bag. And the stands are pretty cool because they give you one for each character. First figure we're going to take a look at is Krieg the Blood Force. And Whoa, cameraman, pan down. There you go. Focus, focus. There we go. So you've probably seen this sculpt before. we gotten this with a uh, cable. Uh, this is a very nice sculpt. Uh, I think one of the things that collectors were voicing their concern about mainly with this character was there wasn't a lot of paint apps. This was the very first one. So uh, I'm not sure if that's part of the character's design. It's more of a cleaner figure or if that was just early in the process. Now, the second figure we'll take a look at is the Pale Driver. This is the one that I really think stands out out of all of them. Uh, the reason why is because this is the one that has the actual paint apps and weathering to it. 
uh it's a toss up between this one and the murder hornet the murder hornet has more paint detailing on the accents and gadgets and stuff but this one has that real world feel to it it just seems like his guy and it's taking his squad into battle and you're coming out and this is the aftermath of it all something that i really wanted to show you guys as we talked about the paint apps and the weathering uh, you kind of get a good idea for it but you'll split the helmet in half that's how you take it off but as you can see if you look inside the helmet there's sculpted detail in there as well as weathering also in the front visor you can see it too it's just nice because it's that added detail that makes it stand out now we're going to go over articulation really quick. Now, these are two of the same body, so I'm just going to go over this once. We'll start off at the head. You are going to get swivel, and that is hindered by the back where that collar is, but I don't know anybody that turns their head except for the exorcist like that. Now, the reason why is because you have a ball peg here, and that ball peg has the light in it. So it has to stay stationary, otherwise you'll break connections, you won't have your light. So you are going to get a little bit of tilt uh, side to side and backward and forward, but not much at all. Now moving down to the shoulders, this is a feature that I really like. These shoulder pads, you can actually pull them out. And the reason why they did this was because it's not a stationary piece. So it allows you to have more range of motion in the arms. So you can get this in a T pose, but you can also take that arm and rotate it upwards without any fear of breaking any pieces. You can get that high. You also have great range of motion moving backwards as well. Now this figure also has butterfly joints that have pretty decent range of motion. You're also getting a little bit of bicep swivel. Uh, the arms are double jointed, but because of the armor pieces, you're not going to be able to get it past 90 degrees. There is also a swivel at the wrist and Mezco also uses their standard split ball peg for the hands. I didn't have any trouble taking those off. Uh, remember what I told you about the shoulder pads? All you have to do is take those and push them back in and aesthetically it just pulls the whole figure back together. Now the electronic section is housed in the chest area so that's what's going to limit the range of motion in this figure. Uh, you do have a little bit of movement going forward but backward I think has a lot of good ability. Uh, you can pretty much lean back like Fat Joe. You can swivel up here at the top and swivel at the hips as well. Now, along with rotation at the hips, you are also going to be able to get this leg up 90 degrees. No problem with that. Uh, you can also take this and extend it outward. I would be very careful because if you press this too far, you are going to be putting uh, stress on the seam lines. This figure also has uh, double jointed knees. Uh, the only thing that's hindering it is the armor plating, but it does have double jointed knees. I know that's a big question for collectors. Uh, also, you are going to get thigh rotation as well as some boot swivel rotation head swivel huh the ankle now the ankle usually mezco catches a lot of flack but there is very good considering that it's an armored character range of motion in the ankle you're just gonna have to push it now there's a little gap that you might be able to see here uh if you push it far enough it'll pop off but it's really not a problem because you can always pop it back on but i think that gives you just like a little bit more of wiggle room if you need to kind of extend the ankle out more than usual with these characters Another feature they have is the light up feature and it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is turn this figure around. There's gonna be a back panel piece. You'll take that, lift that up. You'll need a screwdriver, a little small one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that screw out. There's three batteries that they do include with the figure. All you need to do is put those facing toward the left. And then after that, turn it on and the magic happens. The LEDs on this are pretty good. Uh, they light up pretty well. I can't remember the first version if those were kind of duller. Uh, I've kept the same batteries in here for probably about a good week, week and a half. And these are still uh, glowing pretty bright. Taking a look at the first tray accessories, you're gonna get some hands. So we'll take these fists to hands that come standard on them. Uh, the hands actually come off and on pretty easy. I didn't have to heat up or do anything with these. They use the standard, like I said, ball peg split down the middle. Uh, the first set of hands that you're gonna get are kind of like these cup or C cup gripping hands. And this is what you can use to hold your taser. A taser is really nice, uh, it has lots of little intricate paint apps a little bit of weathering uh, but the line work and the sculpt is pretty well done there's also a blast effect piece that you could put on there uh, it works really well sticks on there shake test shake test yep everything's fine with that but 
translucent so you'd be able to do some light piping with that if you'd like moving on to the hands ah yes the controversial talking point for mezco collectors the trigger hands yep so you are going to get your left trigger hand that's standard we've been seeing that uh the right hand is more of a relaxed trigger hand it's not technically a trigger hand uh, and i think that's what collectors were hoping for but you're not going to get that with this set but you will get the left-handed trigger that allows you to hold the weapon uh, it holds it pretty well no shaking or anything like that and this is what your proton cannon that also has the extended stock that you can push back and forward uh, hey careful careful buddy stay right there yeah uh, this has nice paint apps nice detailing on it there's also a firing effect that comes with it you can just plug that right in the hole uh, stays pretty much in there you could do a shake test and it seems like it's very secure. Shake, 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 shake. See, it works perfectly fine. This isn't anything anybody wants to hear, but the right hand that's supposed to be a trigger hand, uh, you can actually get that to be a passable trigger hand. I, I know it's not the one that'll fit inside the trigger guard, but illusion wise and shake test wise, you'll be able to take that kind of flush it over the trigger guard and you can have your right handed shooter. I guess they only hire left-handed shooters. I have also figured out that I know that they have the C-cup hands, but the trigger hand is the best thing that holds that knife. It is very small, so be very careful. As you can see, it holds it securely, but you don't want to drop this, and it fits right over the sheath of the sword. Not the sword, the knife. The knife. Trigger hand also holds the pistol. Now the pistol does have removable clips as well as a barrel that can extend backwards and forwards. Surprise shake test. There you go. Well, like I said, the barrel can go backwards and forwards. There's also the blast effect from the proton cannon that also fits in the pistol as well. Goes right in that hole and it held pretty secure. You can do a little mini shake test and you can see it doesn't fall out, but everything stays where it should. I like to give equal opportunity time to my clones. So this is the Blood Force knife. And as you notice, it's a different deco color, a little bit of gold uh, on the blade. It also fits in the sheath, it's pretty secure. He also has a different deco colored pistol, but same option, the barrel slides back. And all of these items fit within the holsters and straps very well. Now you can put these in here, you can do a shake test, and all of these items stay pretty much secured. Another accessory that these figures come with are extra magazines. Now these are very tiny, so be very careful. That's why I didn't even chance taking these out of the plastic, but be very careful with them. Like I said, they are tiny. You're also going to get a set of grenades and communicators. You get five grenades and two communicators. Uh, nice paint apps on these and there's different versions for each one of the characters real quick i wanted to take some time to show you character completely loaded out now those little clips you can put those in the front of the belt here they hold pretty secure uh, pistol sidearm goes on the side and then also your knife can be sheathed to the belt on the back side of the belt you'll notice there's a taser holder as well as a grenade oh hold on a sec cosmic dj time anyway the grenades just be careful because they have those little holsters and sometimes you can knock them out and they'll pop out so just be careful with that the proton cannon is on a swivel you'll be able to move that around and it survives the shake test shake 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 yep everything stays in there like i said fully loaded out all the items are still there everything is safe and secure package secure the next accessory that you'll have is the Cyber Scythe. I have a list, I guess. I can't pronounce it, but anyway. Picking it up on camera pretty well. Didn't have to focus too much, but this is pretty nice. Has some uh, translucent reflective blade. And another thing that comes with it is the effect. Look for the little hole in the top, and then you're going to take that and stick it in. No pervy jokes. But you'll stick that in all the way. Come on, you can got it. There you go to get all the way in and then you'll feel a little bit of resistance that's where you stop be careful with that point because it is a sharp point you might break it but this gives you this nice kinetic effect really nice i like this one put some light on that survives the shake test we're golden last thing we'll go over is the poncho uh now you get two ponchos one white one black this is that pleather material it's not early pleather but it is that 
kind of like overlay pleather. So just kind of be careful with that. Easiest way to apply this is just to take it, place it right over the shoulder. There's going to be a Velcro strap that you can see right here. There's going to be two Velcro straps on the other side. And all you got to do is attach it up. All you got to do is attach it up. There you go, Paige. Good job. There's also bendy wire in there on one side as well as the other side. So you can kind of get some dynamic posing going with your capes. Everyone loves dynamicy, don't they? Uh, I also wanted to show you a character with the uh, poncho fully loaded out. So this is the character that we had before. And you can see it still fits over. Even though he has the proton cannon on his back, you could still get that poncho over all the equipment. Because you stuck with me during this breakdown, I'm throwing in a bonus gift here. You get stands. Yes, stands. These are actually really cool. A little bit of mat to it. And there's a little peg that you can place your figure on there. But each one of them gets their own stand. So pale driver, blood force. Yep. So you'll get stands. Congrats. Now, the biggest question I think collectors are going to have is why is this set coming out now? Why didn't they have this initially? And why should I buy this set? Now, I bring this up because I think Mezco realized that this is probably a team that people wanted to complete. This squadron builder takes two of the offerings that were the hardest to obtain, and it makes them readily available for collectors that either missed out on it, they may not have been able to complete it at the time, or whose interests were probably reignited due to the recent murder hoarder pre-order. This does seem to be a push to bring this offering back, and who knows, Maybe this is a door that's opening up to a galactic line of maybe enemies or maybe even different factions of the Krieg. I don't know if you noticed or not, but they did drop the 13 from the Pale Driver and the Murder Hornet. But that's just a theory. In the end, these are all available for people who do want them. The best part about all of this is that everyone has the option to either buy them or not to buy them. And that's it, fellow collectors. My name is Paige. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video has provided you with enough information and visual stimulation for you to decide if this offering is right for you and your collection. And if it's not, remember, they're just toys. So have fun.